Uh, yeah, I hope that you're hearing me. Uh-huh. This is the future, all about cybersecurity. Talking about the hackers, I'm just trying to warn you. From the one and only legend, the cyber informer. Hey, yeah, yeah, this is the cyber reformer. Uh, this is the cyber reformer. Let's go. It's time for the Cybersecurity Business Connect and Protect Central Coast Q&A video. I am Michael Tremblett, the Cyber Informer, and today we'll be answering the question, what is the dark web? We'll look at the surface web, deep web, and dark web. We'll dive into the technology behind the dark web, and I'll show you how to access the dark web from your computer. Let's go. I've been asked the question, what is the dark web? Well, the answer is, it's a layer of the internet that's not accessible publicly, it is anonymous and requires specific software, configurations and authorizations to access. Here's another propeller hat zone. Like the VPN service, we're going to be talking about the technologies behind the dark web and how to access them. Again, like the VPN service video, this rates a three propeller hats out of five. Thanks to Wikipedia for all of these definitions. The surface web is the portion of the World Wide Web that is readily available to the general public and searchable with standard web search engines. It is the opposite of the deep web, the parts of the web not indexed by a web search engine. The surface web consists of 10% of the information that's on the internet. The surface web is made with a collection of public web pages on servers accessible by any search engine. The deep web, the invisible web, or the hidden web are parts of the World Wide Web whose contents are not indexed by standard web search engines. The content of the deep web is hidden behind HTTP forms and includes many very common uses such as webmail, online banking, private or otherwise restricted access social media pages and profiles, some web forums that require registration for viewing content, and services that users must pay for and which are protected by paywalls such as video on demand like Netflix and some online magazines and newspapers. The dark web or dark net. As mentioned at the top of this video, The dark web is a layer of the internet that is not accessible publicly. It is anonymous and requires specific software, configurations, and authorizations to access. The term dark net was popularized by major news outlets to associate with Tor Onion services. We'll talk about the Tor Onion network shortly. Technologies such as Tor, I2P, and Freenet were intended to defend digital rights by providing security anonymity or censorship resistance and is used for both illegal and legitimate reasons. It also enables anonymous communication between whistleblowers, activists, journalists and news organizations. Thanks to medium.com for this image. This is a simplified view of the surface web, the deep web and what the dark web is. As we covered in the previous slides, the surface web is your normal web browsing. This includes Google, Facebook and news websites. If you have a website for your business, it will be in the surface web. The deep web is all of the data whose records are hidden from search engines. This includes your bank or financial records, your medical records, your email, and if you use Google Docs or Microsoft 365, the data you store there is on the deep web. In other words, you can get to your data by logging into a service. It is not accessible by simply doing a Google search. The dark web is like the deep web, but it is anonymous and harder to get to. I think this image is a really good example of what the internet really does look like. Only a small percentage of an iceberg is above the surface, which is the surface web. Everything else is below the surface. It is hard to comprehend how much data there is in the deep web, considering how much data there is in the surface web. You can find almost anything on the surface web. So it really makes you think how much data there is below the surface. It's kind of mind boggling actually. So how do you access the dark web? Firstly, you'll need the Tor browser. It is available for free from https colon slash slash www.torproject.org slash download. We'll have a look at the Tor network very shortly. But for now, what is the Tor network? You will use the Tor browser to access it. Originally, it was called the Onion Router Project, but the acronym was dropped in favor of the name Tor. It was originally called the onion router because your connection travels through several layers like an onion. It has gone from strength to strength throughout the years with developers making it very easy to access today. Tor was instrumental in allowing for Edward Snowden's whistleblowing on the NSA back in 2013. We won't go into too much of the history now, but you can read more about it at https colon slash slash www.torproject.org slash about slash history. On the last part of the history page, it states, 
We at the Tor Project fight every day for everyone to have private access to an uncensored internet, and Tor has become the world's strongest tool for privacy and freedom online. It is partly funded by the Electronic Frontier Foundation, which is a non-profit and an essential business for defending digital privacy, free speech, and innovation. Whilst the Tor network is used by criminals, it is also used for good, and as a result, it will be around for a long time. Unfortunately, like anything else that will guarantee anonymity, this tool will be used by criminals. So how does the Tor network work? This is a conceptual diagram of the dark web and how the Tor network works. Your connection enters the entry guard router. The connection is then bounced to a middle relay, which is chosen from a huge pool of nodes, and then enters the exit node. If you are accessing the surface internet, this is where you exit the Tor network. You'll notice this is similar to a VPN. As we talked about in the Do I Need a VPN video, your IP address will be that of the exit node. Unlike a commercial VPN service, however, you have no control over where this exit node will be. It is also noticeably slower than commercial VPN services. I wouldn't want to try and stream Netflix through this. The connection from your Tor browser through the Tor network is called a circuit. The circuit is created when you open the Tor browser and it is automatically re-established every 10 minutes or so. Note how there are multiple green arrows in this diagram. This indicates that each node in the circuit creates a separate encrypted connection. This means that each node only knows of the node before it and after it. It has no concept of the originator or the destination, just the next node in line. The exit node knows how to get to the destination, but the rest of the nodes do not. This is what makes the Tor network anonymous. You can't trace a connection through the Tor network. Tor also provides the Onion Service Protocol, which allows for web publishing or instant messaging servers. You can connect to these Onion services through the Tor client. This means the users and servers locations are anonymous. I'm not going to create a diagram of this as it's rather complex. This diagram simplifies the entire network. The anonymity of the network is why black hat hackers use it to host their services and conduct their business. For further information on how the Tor network works, you can go to the addresses on the screen. Let's demonstrate how the dark web works. In order to access the dark web, we need to download the Tor browser. You can go to the website torproject.org download to get your copy. Once it's installed, you'll then be able to access the Tor browser from your desktop. When you go into the Tor browser, it looks like any other web browser. In fact, it's a fork of Firefox. If we have a look at the web address, you'll notice it's a .onion address. This is DuckDuckGo's .onion address. You'll also see this is Facebook's .onion address. Because you can't search the dark web, there is a website called The Hidden Wiki, which has an index of a number of dark web websites that you can visit. There is a website that attempts to search the dark web, and that's called Daniel. This is his website and his .onion web address. I was going to show you the Revil or the Sedina Kibi website, which is the mysterious ransomware group's dark website. Unfortunately, it has been taken offline and no one knows why. Perhaps we'll hear why in the future, but at the moment, it's as mysterious as they are. Let's take Daniel's Onion website and we'll put it into a regular browser. We'll see that we just cannot get to that website. This is because we're not going through the Onion network or the Tor browser, so those websites just go nowhere on the surface internet. If we go back to the Tor browser, we'll click on the icon next to the URL in the website. This will display the circuit. We can see the guard node, which is the United Kingdom one at the beginning. That's where we enter the Tor network. We then bounce to the Netherlands, France, and then to three relays that we have no idea where they're located. And that's the beauty of the Tor network. We don't know where those middle relays are, and it's impossible to find out their location. Now, if we go to a Surface website, through the Tor browser. We'll have a look at the whatismyipaddress.com website, which will tell us exactly where we're emerging onto the internet. So we can see we have an IPv4 and an IPv6 address, and what we'll see is that we're emerging in Austria. Now let's check our circuit, and we'll see that we're being bounced to the UK, United States, then Austria, then we're going to the whatismyip.com web address. The beauty of this is that you know the circuit, but anyone looking at your connection will not be able to trace that back to you. It's a really, really cool system. That's the dark web and the Tor network. It all boils down to that you use the Tor browser and access .onion websites to access the dark web. We'll exit the propeller hat zone now. What did we learn? The surface web is the portion of the World Wide Web that is readily available to the general public and searchable with standard web search engines. The deep web, invisible web, or hidden web are parts of the World Wide Web 
whose contents are not indexed by standard web search engines. The dark web is a layer of the internet that's not accessible publicly. It's anonymous and requires specific software configurations and authorizations to access. In other words, the Tor browser. The Tor network was designed for internet freedom and anonymity, which is why criminals love it. When you access a .onion site, you are accessing a hidden service or a dark web website. Thank you for joining me for the answer to what is the dark web. It's not too difficult to access the dark web and like anything anonymous, it can be used for good or evil. Don't forget, you can contact me via email, Instagram, Facebook or Twitter. Also, check out the podcast on Spotify, Deezer, iTunes, Google Podcasts, and where all good podcasts are found. Search and subscribe to Cybersecurity Business Connect and Protect, Central Coast, the podcast. Until next time, stay safe online. Oh, yeah, this is yeah. the Cyber Reformer. Hackers, you going down like, oh, yeah, this is the Cyber Reformer. Hackers, you going down, yeah.